I saw a question on an internet news group about uh, setting up a constraint in FEMAP and NASTRAN uh, where the constraint didn't kick in until after the structure had moved a certain uh, distance. Uh, you can actually set that up in NASTRAN with a, a C-Bush uh, element connected to a uh, force versus displacement for its uh, stiffness. So let me go end to end and show you how you'd set this up in FEMAP. We're just going to do it with a simple beam model. So I'll just start off just creating a, a line between, uh, we'll make this beam, let's say, uh, 60 inches long. And let's do this, like I said, all the way from the beginning. First thing we'll need is a material. So I'll go into the tree here and pick material and just load a uh, 6061 aluminum from the uh, FEMAP material library. Now these are in English units, and once you pick a material in FEMAP, you've kind of defined all your units. Since this is an inch, uh, pound, uh, PSI type unit, um, all my lengths will be in inches, all my forces will be in pounds. I've got to already define that. If I would have picked a uh, metric material, then you know, I could have been in millimeters and newtons or whatever unit system I picked. Uh, the next thing we'll need will be a property. And the default property in FEMAP is a, a plate. So here we do want to create a beam. And I can enter the beam properties or I could use something from our, our shape library. And let's just create a T section. Uh, we'll give it a height of 2, width of 1, and then set up some uh, thicknesses here. And this is an orientation vector, and you'll see later on when I'm creating my beam elements, I'm going to use this y-axis here to define which way uh, my beam is pointing in space. The x-axis is always along the beam, and then the y and z gets defined with these, uh, this reference vector. So I'll create my property, and that's... Um, Oh, there it is, ready to go. Let's give it a name, at least, T section. And we'll connect it to that material we already made. And I'll say, OK, my property's created. And I'm done creating properties. And they're over here in the, the model tree now, in case I want to edit them or, or, or list them or whatever. Uh, so let's do some meshing here. I'm going to set a mesh size on this uh, curve I created at, at 20 elements. And then we'll just go ahead and mesh it. We'll use that beam property. It's the only one we got anyway. And here's that orientation vector. So I'm going to say my that that y-axis I picked in my cross section is going to align with global y. And uh, right now the cross section is turned off, but we could turn it on. And you'll see that that's you know the, that's how I got the beam to align this way. If I would have picked the vector this way, I could spin the beam around. So that's that's how you control how a beam's oriented. Uh, let's just turn that back off. Uh, so now let's go ahead and just put a constraint on this. We'll make our basic FEA model first, and I'll say uh, fixed. And then I'll open that up and say I want to create a nodal constraint there and fix all the degrees of freedom. And we'll create a load in the same way. So I'll create a new load set and loading. Open up that load set and create a nodal load down at the end there, and we'll point in the positive y direction with 200 pounds. Uh, so right now we've got a simple cantilever beam with an end load, but the whole point of this was uh, setting up a displacement that didn't really get kick in until after a certain distance. Now to do that in FEMAP, like I said, it's a, it's a C-Bush element and it has its stiffness controlled by a FEMAP function. So I'm going to go down to our functions and here's where I'm going to set up the uh, stiffness. So this will be displacement versus force. So it's kind of like a nonlinear spring we're setting up here. And what I'll just say, you know, at zero displacement, there's zero force. Uh, when we get to two inches of displacement, let's have the, the spring kick in there. So up to 1.99, we'll have it still be no stiffness. But right when it goes to two, we'll have 10,000 pounds on that spring, which will certainly be stiff enough. And then all the way up to 20, It'll be 10,000 pounds, so as long as we stay below that, we'll be okay. But it's basically a simple ramp function. We'll say okay, and that creates the function. Um, now to connect this function up, we need we need this C bush property. So I go under my properties, say new. Uh, it wants us to create another beam, but here we want to do a spring damper, and we want to tell it it's not a regular spring; it's a Nastrian C bush. I'll say OK, and now this box will change to the C-Bush property. So we'll call this a non-linear C-Bush. And we do have to give it a stiffness in the X direction, which is between the, the two nodes we're going to have. But we'll just throw in a dummy stiffness here, because the real stiffness is going to be controlled by 
that function we created. So degree freedom one, which would be the x direction, its stiffness is controlled by that function. And then there's also some other neat things here you can do on the dynamic side with uh, stiffness versus frequency or force versus velocities. There's a lot of uh, neat dynamic things you can do there. But here we're just going to do as the uh, gap opens up or the spring element opens up, no stiffness until it gets to two. And I think that's all we need to do there. Now we just need to create the element. So let's just pick a spot out here on the beam. Uh, let's just go out there and we'll, what we'll do is just copy one of those nodes and say mesh copy node. Pick one and we'll just copy it down minus one and the global Y. So now we got two nodes, the one on the beam and the one here. I'm going to turn off these offsets on the beam to just get line elements. So I'll hit control E which brings up the Femap element creation dialog box and we're just creating an element from there to there. And we'll say OK. And we also want to constrain this node. So I'll just add another constraint definition on that node that is fully fixed as well. At that's, this point we're looking pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and save this model now. Let's give it a name. And to set up, let's set up our analysis run now. So I'll go down here. I want to create a new analysis. This will be a nonlinear static. There's also other options, obviously, in FEMAP, but here we want to be uh, nonlinear static. And the options are uh, pretty much spelled out for us. The only thing I want to do is on the nonlinear, the defaults are already set up. But I do want to get all the intermediate act, uh, output, so I'll see every step of the nonlinear analysis. This will allow us to see that thing uh, go unconstrained for a little bit, then then kick in towards the end. So I'm, at this point, I can analyze. We'll let Nastran run it. Uh, it's finished already. It's reading the results back in, and I'll shut down the, the monitoring thing there. But now we got results. Uh, I want to look at actual displacements, not anything deformed. So we're going to be looking at actual, and I will pick my results I have here and say multi set animate and you'll see what happens there the model runs up to a certain point when it hits that two inches that that constraint kicks in and then it's stiffer afterwards so we can even look at those one at a time and just say it looks like somewhere around here you know long ways there it's a little bit further to the constraint it beams a little softer and then at two inches that constraint kicks in gets stiffer now the beam is bending about that pivot point. So this is a neat way to make a constraint that uh, kicks in after a certain distance.